Hi guys, welcome to my review of Upgrade, and man, 20, 2018 was the best year for movies, and this is one of them that I missed, man, cause yeah, this movie is basically better than the actual Venom movie, cause a scene, Nostalgia Critic actually referenced this movie as well, and man, I should've watched this sooner man, I'm a bit late, I'm like two years late, <laughs> I think it's already been two years, that's crazy. But yeah, I'm not sure if I know the actor's name, but he kind of looks a lot like Tom Hardy as well, you know, who played as Venom, which is crazy. It's just fun. Did this, wait, when did Venom come out again? I'm not sure if it was 2018. But yeah, this movie's definitely better than Venom, and it's the Venom movie we should have got. Definitely. Wow. I'm kind of surprised with this movie. It's not a long movie too, it's like 1 hour and 39 minutes. Well, a bit less if you're not counting credits. So it's basically like 1 hour and 34 minutes. But yeah, so I guess for two, three minutes, I'll talk about non-spoilers. Then I guess the rest of the review will be spoilers. But yeah, I, I just don't want to spend too long on this review. But yeah, I I highly recommend you watch this movie if you didn't watch it in 2018. Because, man, 2018 was the best year for movies. I don't think 2018 will ever be beaten. I think it will forever be the best year for movies for me. Because I, I got my new favourite movie of all time, Infinity War. There was the Mission Impossible movie. There was, was just like so much Incredibles too. A, a sequel we waited so long for, like twenty years. Basically, twenty years in a way. Yeah, there was just so many movies in twenty eighteen. Definitely the best year. But yeah, we're talking about this movie now. So I guess I'll talk about the basic plot. What you're gonna see in the first five ten minutes. Well. Because basically this guy, played by Marshall Gray, I'm not, so, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right because I tried to look up this actor's name because this guy just looks so much like Tom Hardy for some reason. This is so weird, the resemblance. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they were related. But yeah, this movie. <laughs> I was so surprised how good it was. Because think of, you know, the Venom movie. But if it was, well, I don't know if this movie's R-rated, but there's a, there's a lot of brutal moments. Yeah, definitely. It must be R rated then. But yeah, it's Logan Marshall, not Grey Marshall. Is it Logan Marshall Grey? Yeah, I think that's his name. But yeah, he basically is he's kind of a mechanic, right? He also likes his old cars. And he has a wife who's, you know, more into the modern technology because we get to see some futuristic cars that can talk. So they basically have like well I wouldn't I don't know if I'd say AI AI in them. You know, they can basically talk to your back and they even ask how you're doing and everything. So, yeah, this is basically set in a futuristic world. But I just don't know how much I can say in non spoilers because, in like, I guess one minute and 45 seconds, I'm, I'm going to be talking about spoilers. But yeah, definitely, this movie has great action. It's just well made. I just wasn't, I was surprised. I just thought this was going to be like a average movie. After, well, after watching The Man of the Iron Fist. Should I just say that's an average movie at this point? I just thought, like, with that, just how the movie started, I, I wasn't expecting much from it, but yeah, it just surprised me. And yeah, the fighting scenes, they're just so good when, when we get to those parts. Because the, the basic story is that he basically ends up in an accident and he ends up in a wheelchair. But then there's this thing that his brother makes for him, what, what makes him walk again. And he's basically able to do things that he wouldn't be able to normally do. So think of the, I, I don't know, Brian Fury from Tekken. With his metal arms, like his strength. But then like, I don't know. Just the, just the way how he moves, it kind of reminds me of Brian Fury. He's so robotic. And so accurate as well. Because basically he can hear like a computer inside of his head. And that and he can basically that big computer can well I don't know if I should call it, but this AI thing, well it's basically a, a computer chip on the back of his neck, that was planted there. And yeah, it basically talks to him and it can take control whenever it wants. But you know it asks, you know the main character first. 
if it's allowed to take control. <clears throat> but yeah, definitely a great idea for a movie. And like I said before, if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. But yeah, I'm going to talk about spoilers now. So yeah, at the beginning, we basically meet him and his wife. I guess they have a nice house together. And then like, I guess the brother decides to introduce his wife to his brother, which is like a, a famous creator who owns a company. And I guess, you know, later on we found out that... Well, I'm not sure how much of this is true, though. Because the, the ending got a bit, you know, crazy. Because I wasn't expecting that. But if you think about it, something like this should have happened in the first Venom movie. But since it wasn't our rated and stuff, I don't know if they should go that well. Because, yeah, the ending got pretty dark. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about spoilers now. So, I, best, I basically can talk about any moment now. So, yeah. Yeah, that ending where the AI was actually the one ba- like behind it. Because from the very beginning of the movie, once the accidents, yeah, the accident scene happened, I was instantly saying, it's the brother. He's, like, the one who did this and killed his wife. Which, yeah, his wife dies. Like, the wife gets executed. And then, I guess, the main character was one who was supposed to... Well, he basically gets injected with a chip. The chip that actually, at the end of the movie, controls him fully. Yeah. That was crazy. It's kind of like a twist. It's just funny that with the Venom movie, they went in like a... kind of superhero route. Kind of like with Suicide Squad. Instead of how it should have been. Because we should have seen, you know, Ed... Eddie Brock's life just fall apart. Then he just submits to Venom. Like, imagine if that happened at the end of the movie, he just, like, submits to Venom, and he fully takes over, instead of them being friends together. It was kind of weird. They should have went in that way. Like, they should have went in that direction, in my opinion, since that's what the comics and the TV shows do. Like, that would have been a better ending, and, you know, it was actually R-rated. Just imagine the type of Venom movie we could have got. This is like the closest proper Venom movie we've basically got. But, you know, no Venom. It's just like some chip inside of him that eventually takes control of him. Yeah, I was so surprised with that ending. <laughs> and that the brother wasn't fully behind it. I just got a bit confused at the end. Because I thought like, oh yeah, at the beginning I predicted the ending. But then, you know, it was actually the robot who did all this. Because there was the guy who actually kills his wife. Like, so he does get revenge on him. Also, because it looks like he shot his wife, but I guess, I don't know, something he has, because it's kind of similar to the main character where he does have enhancements and he's able to, you know, keep up when he actually is fighting the main character because, you know, he has similar abilities other than, you know, sneezing and then these nanobot things can just like kill a bartender. But yeah, man, but for the main character, the thing that's controlling the main character at times. It's so brutal. Like he has it like has pretty brutal scenes in the movie when it's trying to find the killer. And what was what was the robot song? I don't know I don't even know what to call it. Should I call it the chip? The robot, the AI? Like what was its whole plan for the movie? Cause when you find out like the robot's behind it, it's just at the end I got a bit confused. Yeah, I probably, I probably need to rewatch this movie, but yeah. It's a great watch anyway. I just can't believe I missed this. Because even Nostalgia Critic knew how good this movie was. I'm kind of sad I didn't, I didn't watch it originally. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. I definitely got to watch this again soon. Probably sometime next year, but early next year. Yeah. Man, what am I going to review after this? I think I'm going to start reviewing some 2020 movies. Maybe I, I could review a movie that has some of the Teen Wolf cast, because I'm watching Teen Wolf right now. And there's a movie that recently came out this year with some of the Teen Wolf cast, so that might be my next movie tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah, this movie was really good. I just wasn't expecting that ending, because there's, there's also a cop who was 
trying to help him at, at the start, but then got suspicious with all these people who could be connected to his wife's death. And then, like, at the end, that, that final scene where he's trying to stop himself from shooting the cop who was trying to help him and then realises that there was something wrong with him and then tailed him. Also, there's that scene where the well, the AI thing actually controls their cars, controls a car, then makes her get crashed. Yeah, that's the only time we see it control something else. Yeah. But yeah, that ending where, like, the moment when you see the cop getting killed, damn, <laughs> it's fully took control. Because he basically submits to, I guess, the robot, where he's just stuck in the world. Also, the kind of reference, I mean, not reference, the kind of foreshadowed the ending where he was, because the brother was trying to shut him down before, but, you know, a hacker was helping him. And in that scene, the hacker says that, because there's like these people who are in virtual reality and then he asks like why would they want to be in virtual reality for this long and you know she says that it's better than the real world and that kind of foreshadows the ending where he basically submits to the robot and then he just dreams of his wife like Irvin's happy because that ending I knew wasn't real like they're gonna say it was all a dream (laughs) yeah right that was the ending he wish he got, but yeah, the Wobbot basically wins at the end, so it's not really a happy ending. <laughs> nice. This is how the Venom movie should have been. They just went in the lame direction, just basically make him like a superhero in a way. We'll just see how to do Carnage anyway, with the actor that they've got. He's a great actor, but they should have got Michael C. Hall for Venom. I mean, not for Venom, I mean Carnage. He would have been perfect. If you've seen Dexter, then you know why, but yeah. I guess that's it for the review, since I'm talking about a completely different movie, which I guess I'll review in the future. But yeah, I'm going to review a 2020 movie, you know, tomorrow. But yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.